Good day, good day everybody. Once again, we are back together and we are still continuing with that grade 11, well, slash grade 12 uh, uh, geometry. So please, if you haven't subscribed, do the right thing, right? And uh, of course, your uncle will continue to give you some good content. All right, now let's get right into it. Um, I wanted to start with this first one. Right, so they said that two circles intersect at C and E. Right, so we've got a point of intersection there. Okay, or rather two points of intersection of the two circles. Right, C and E, right? They say G is a point on HF in a bigger circle. Right, we can see where G is uh, over there. All right, so, and they say GE is a tangent. Now, please note, the moment we've got a tangent, we know we're going to use our, so this line here is a tangent to the smaller circle, right? All right, at E. So immediately when I look at that, I already know that uh, CEG or E2 will be equal to 73 degrees. Right, so they give us angles there. They say FHC is 75, so it's given there. And D is a point on the circle, on the smaller circle, uh, with CDE equal to 73. Now they say to us, giving reasons uh, were required, determine the size of E1. All right, so let's do that. So if we look at that circle, let's start with the smaller circle. We know GE is a tangent and notice this time the angle between the tangent and the chord right will be equal to the angle on the opposite side of that chord so that means that uh, angle d must be equal to e1 so let's start there so d is equal to e1 which is 73 Right, and why is that? That's because of the 10 chord theorem. Uh, usually you'd write this next to that uh, statement, the phrase that, uh, or rather that, uh, uh, you know, that statement that you have at first, but because of space, uh, I will just write it underneath. Right, so we know that's equal to 73 degrees. Okay, but note, you've got a cyclic quad, isn't it? So that entire H, C, E, F, that's a cyclic quad, isn't it? Okay, so that means angle H, right, the whole of that angle H plus the angle C, E, F, that would be equal to 180 degrees. And why is that? Because they are opposite angles on a cyclic quad, right? So we're going to say angle H plus angle CEF. Uh, CEF is equal to 180 degrees. And we said this is because we've got opposite angles on a cyclic quad, right? Uh, cyclic quad, we know that they are equal to 180, right? So in this case, that means that CEF, okay? So because we know H is 75, so CEF will be equal to 180 minus 75, all right? So that will be equal to 105, okay? Right, so in this case, because we know that they're opposite angles of a cyclic quad. And therefore, in this case, remember, CEF is made out of E1 and E2. So E1 plus E2, that's equal to 105. Uh, 105, but we already know that uh, E2 is equal to um, a 73. We just found that out. So E1 will therefore be equal to 105 minus E2, but we found E2 to be 73 degrees, right? Okay. 
So what does that give us? So that's 105. This is me being really lazy. Okay, minus 73. That will give us 32 degrees. Okay, I hope that you understood that, ladies and gents. Right, as we move on to another question, I want us to uh, look at another question. Right, so um, we're given there in the diagram, uh, C is a point on the chord BE, right? So C is a point on this chord BE. Okay, so we know that uh, uh, they say uh, on DE with EF equal to FD. So EF equal to FD already, ladies and gents, that tells me, okay, but uh, we'll talk about that. So they say A is the center. Now look at that. You've got a line from the center that bisects a chord, right? So what does that mean? That already tells me that's equal to 90 degrees, isn't it? Okay, so it therefore bisects that chord. That's uh, the converse of theorem one, okay? Right, so A is the center, all right, uh, of the circle, and in this case, FC, um, and they therefore say DAB is equal to 86 degrees. Now, um, before we even answer the question, so let's have a look at this. So I see that I also have line from center, or rather angle at center, twice angle at circumference, can you see? So in this case, uh, um, CAB, they are both subtended by line DF, I mean DB, right? So this is the angle at center, which is 86, right? So therefore, it would mean that the angle at circumference would be half of that. So this would be 43 degrees, okay? But what, what else do I note? We said we've got line from center. Uh, perpendicular to a chord, all right? And uh, in this case, we can find, now we've got radii. Of course, ladies and gents, please don't ever forget those radii, right? So in this case, we've got um, uh, AB equal to AD, right? They are radii. And as a result, it means that triangle DAB would be, in this case, a um, is an isosceles triangle, and as a result, it means that we can say those two angles there are equal, right? That's uh, angles opposite equal, uh, I mean, uh, angles opposite equal sides, okay? And as a result, we can find whatever it is that we want to find. Now, they say to us, determine the size of D2. Okay, let's start there, right? Already, uh, we could see that those two angles are equal there, right? So I'm going to say, right, in triangle DAB, okay, I know, right, in triangle DAB, all right, uh, triangle rather, so in triangle DAB, we've got that, um, all right, AB is equal to A. D, okay, why? Because they are radii, okay? So, therefore, angle D2 will be equal to angle B2, right? These are angles opposite equal sides, okay? Or you can say that the B is isosceles, and therefore, the base angles of an isosceles triangle. Right. So now, we know that uh, uh, angle DAB, so angle DAB, sorry, DAB plus B2 plus D2 is equal to 180. But because those angles are equal, in this case, it means that we will say, uh, B2, okay, um, if we call them, uh, both of them X, so D2 plus B2, that will be 2X, right? So if we call them X, it will be X plus X plus 86, uh, 2X plus 86 is equal to 180, 
and so uh, 2x will be equal to 180 minus 86 minus 86 that will give us 94 and so in this case x will be equal to so we are going to divide that by 2 and that gives us 47 degrees i hope you see that ladies and gents right so in this case it means that this angle would be equal to 47 right okay so i'm gonna fill that in so both of them are equal to 47 right so uh in this case oh by the way i didn't give a reason for uh, this statement here these are angles in a triangle right sum of angles in a triangle all right so they say determine the size of deb right so um deb okay we've already done so okay so we know that deb or rather let's put it this way dab is equal to two times deb right and why is that angle at center equal to two times angle at circumference okay right so what would be the size at uh, dab is 86 okay so in this case deb must be half of that deb let's write it nicely right so divide that by two okay so the size of deb would be equal to 43 degrees okay so we've got that and now they say to us prove that dabc is a cyclic quad now remember whenever they say you must prove that a line is a cyclic quad uh, it would mean that there would it 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 is not uh, around a circle right but we now need to prove that the the properties of a cyclic quad are applicable right so let's go there at uh, dabc so it would be that entire thing there okay so d a b c all right we need to prove that that guy is a cyclic quad now there are two ways in which we can do it we can uh, prove that uh, the opposite angles rather of a cyclic quad uh, are supplementary or the exterior angle of a cyclic quad in this case uh, is equal to the opposite interior angle right uh, so we can use any of those right now let's try and use what we already have so we were given in this case now please i want you to note ladies and gents we know that that's equal to 90 degrees okay uh, that angle there is 90 degrees we already have found that right and now uh, what else do we know we know that this would therefore be equal to 90 degrees as well okay all right so in this case what would be the size of angle c1 so angle c1 please i want you to note in this case that's the sum of angles on a triangle isn't it so angle c1 so let's start there um uh, in fact we need to first state that that's a 90 degrees uh so um angle c a f uh, c f e rather angle c f e that's equal to 90 degrees okay and why is that remember uh 90 degrees and i need to open a bracket there and why is that we said this is line from center line from center bisects okay the chord right so we know if it bisects the chord 
then it means that uh, they are perpendicular. So in this case, in triangle C1, Uh, rather in triangle CFE, uh, we've got that uh, angle C1 plus angle C2, uh, rather angle C1 plus angle CFE plus angle E will be equal to 180. These are angles in a triangle, right? And so what it means is that angle C1 will be 180 minus 90 minus 43, right? And in this case, what would that give us? Uh, 90 minus 43. Ah, oh, man. 90 minus 43, that gives us 47 degrees, right? Ah, and what do you note, ladies and gents? Right, so we've got this guy um, to be 47 degrees. And we've got that angle on the inside as well uh, to be equal to 48 degrees. Uh, in fact, yeah, I made an error here. Uh, so this was supposed to be D A F, uh, I mean D A C B. So uh, this guy is forty seven, and that angle is forty seven. Do you see that it's an exterior angle of a cyclic quad, right? So in this case, I can say therefore, uh, C one is equal to D two, right? And therefore, uh, so they are both 47 degrees, okay? And so therefore, DACB is a cyclic quad, right? And why is that, ladies and gents? So it is a cyclic quad because we are applying the converse of the fact that the exterior angle of a cyclic quad, cyclic quad. All right, so we know that the exterior angle is equal to the opposite interior angle. All right, and essentially, ladies and gents, that is how the cookie crumbles on this question. Right, I hope that you are back again for more, and we'll be doing some more of this Euclidean geometry, guys. Um, you know, it's relevant for both grade 11 and 12, and um, I'll continue on this. Otherwise, from me for now, I'll see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.